Stand as we sing our first hymn, begin our worship number 394, Lift High the Cross. And would you please sing verses 1 to 5 and 10 and 11. 1 to 5, 10 and 11.
the signs and peace desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are to be called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Remembered that he had said this, 
and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
know and no support of Moses of God's law, which is the Ten Commandments. And this passage is probably the best known in the whole of the Old Testament. The Ten Commandments are described as the words that God spoke to the people of Israel after delivering them from slavery in Egypt. Following in the wise ways of these ten, leads to stronger relationships with God and our neighbour. And if you look, you'll see that they're split up into two sections. The first four are about our relationship with God, and the remaining six about our relationship with each other. They are a vision of the community that God longs for us to live in. And as God's community here in this part of town, we should always be asking ourselves how we see this vision come to life in our midst. In what ways is our community of believers living justice with creation and with the people of the world? And in what ways is our community of believers Seek the preeminence of God and the true worship of God. During COVID, many of us reached out to our community to serve and to care for each other as Christ did for us. Jesus came to teach people what it means to live in God's way and to truly fulfill God's will. And Jesus very helpfully sums up the law and especially the Ten Commandments, with their emphasis on our relationship with God and with each other. Some are more successive in a way that is far easier for us to remember, and which we've been using through them, following the Parchment Confession. He said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this love your neighbour as yourself. Some people will always get the job done. Some people will never grasp that the commandments given by God are meant to be liberating, are meant to set us free, not meant to keep everything in order and not meant to keep us in a right relationship with God by restricting what we may or may not do. The Jews had built this magnificent temple. It was a place that represented God's presence with his people. And importantly, it had the tablets of stone upon which were inscribed the commandments given by God to Moses. It was a truly magnificent place and reminded people of God's special relationship with them. The rules began to take precedence over the spiritual dictates. Flawless animals had to be sacrificed. The Roman coinage wasn't allowed. So livestock were sold and many changes provided for temple currency. <coughs> this is flourished on the back of the living. And of course, everyone got their cut out of the money changers and the sale of animals for sacrifice. Such rules and regulations then did those in power and were nothing to do with loving God and loving the neighbor. Yet, how is in this same temple were the commandments given by God so that his people could rightly order their lives? The contrast between the life envisaged by these commandments, a life of love and respect for God and neighbour, and the life being demonstrated by those who were responsible for overseeing the temple, shocked Jesus. So Jesus overturns the temples of the money changers and throws out those selling the livestock and the birds for sacrifice, challenging those who were trying God's law with humanism and tradition. And because we see that the law was intended not to restrict, but to free. And if anyone ever tries to tell you on that gentle Jesus meek and mild, remind them that Jesus wore the wood and whipped people out of the temple. Because Jesus knew that religion our whole relationship with God should be life-giving and liberating, not bound up by rules that gave easy options. 
Almighty God, creator of all things, we give you thanks for the resources of our world, for the wonders, the wonders and the mysteries of our universe. Help us to use wisely all you have given to us for the benefit of others, for the well-being of the earth, and to the glory of your holy name. Amen. So we give you thanks for the beauty and the order of our world, for special holy places, and for this, our own lovely church, that through them we may learn respect for your world and for each other. give you thanks Heavenly Father and ask you to guide all leaders of worship to inspire all creatures of the world and to direct your faithful people in the ways of holiness and peace. Lord in your mercy. Yeah. Pray for the world, for all legislators. We pray for those who set standards for us to live by. And we pray for tolerance in our lawgivers and our lawmakers, in our parliaments. For those who influence the minds of us and others. For broadcasters, for those who create what we call the press, or political leaders. We pray for all who deal in world trade, in commerce or industry. Give to each the wisdom and the will to use properly what you have given them, so that your will 
make it down here on earth. Lord, in your mercy. So, Heavenly Father, on this day, we are asked to join with all sorts of people around the world, and especially in this country, to reflect on this day of reflection, remember and pray tribute to those who died during the pandemic, a time when many people were not able properly to grieve their loved ones. For those who are still suffering, and for those who worked so long and so hard to bring it to a, what we might call a conclusion. And so, we join those prayers for those who are on our prayer list and those who are known to us privately, including Bob Morris, Jane Coleman, Henry Warren, Ken Goodship, Rex Hitchens, Nicola Rigby, and Sonia Ryder. And in a moment of silence, those that we bring to our Heavenly Father privately.
forsaken. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Heavenly, Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you Thank you. Thank you. 
us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The Lord be our Lord, we are our Lord, and we also will share in the body of Christ.